hello guys you're welcome back again to my channel if you're new here you're welcome today i'm going to be showing you the cutting and the sewing part of the short collar jacket that i shared the pattern drafting video sometimes last week if you haven't seen that video make sure to check it out i'm going to post a link to that uh, pattern drafting video in the description box make sure to watch it because this one is going to be a continuation to that video if you haven't subscribed yet to my channel use the red button down below to subscribe so you don't miss my sewing tutorial that i share every now and then on this channel so without further ado let's jump right into the sewing table so right here i have that pattern from that last video um, here is the front end. This is the back. The very first thing I'm going to do is to cut through the dart area. So I'm going to slash through my dart area like so. I'm also going to repeat the same thing to the back side as well. I'm going to slash through the dart area. Like I said in my previous video, this part is optional. If you don't want uh, your dart area to be cut through, you may not uh cut it so now once that is done i went ahead and used that pattern to cut out on my fabric and i cut out two pieces of each and i added half inch along the dart area and half inch along my arm o. this is also my back pattern i cut it out the same way two pieces of each and i added half inch along the dart area on both sides and also half inch along my arm o. okay so now i'm setting that aside here is my sleeve pattern it's a two-piece sleeve for a jacket i have a video on this already i'm going to also post a link in the description box make sure you check it out if you don't know how to draft a two-piece sleeve for a jacket so i also cut out two pieces for my upper sleeve and also two pieces for my under sleeve as well all right so i will set this aside and just to show you that i also cut out a fusible interfacing of this collar area making use of my main fabric to cut out the fusible interfacing so here is my fusible interfacing all right so everything you cut out for your main fabric make sure you cut them out for your lining as well so now it's time to start joining i have my front panel here i've already ironed the fusible interfacing on top of it as you can see now i'm going to place the side panel on top of that one like this and i'm going to join along the dart area by half inch and i'm going to repeat the same thing on the other side as well place it like this join by half inch along the dart area and once that is done i have something that looks like this i am going to notch all the curved area and also flat iron your seams so go ahead and press your seams iron it really nicely and then set that aside now i'm working on my back here is my center backs i'm joining both of them together like this right side facing each other as usual and i'm joining along my center back by half of an inch once that is done you open it up like this and then you are going to place the side as well along the dart area you place the side like so and then you are going to also join by half inch along the dart area once that is done you open it up and also place the other side as well and join it also by half inch along the dart area the same exact way okay so once i was done doing that this is what I came up with. I also went ahead and notched all the curved area and I flat iron all my seams. Here is the wrong side. You can see all my seams are completely flat. This is going to ensure that my jacket stays nicely fitted on the body and has no bulge. Okay, so here is my front panel right now. I'm bringing it back to the table and i am just i'm showing you that i also went ahead and flat ironed the seams as well so the next thing to do now is to combine both the back and the front together this way you are going to place them right side facing each other matching the side seams together 
as you can see me doing in the video and then you are going to go ahead and stitch by whatever seam allowance you left on your side repeat the same thing on the other side as well all right and once i was done doing that this is what i have you can see it's coming together already all right so all the joining you've done so far on your main fabric you have to join your lining the same way as well and as you can see the fabric on this part where the collar is is different from the other sides because this part has to be some kind of beautiful fabric that you want to have on your collar once your jacket is done and i also ironed my fusible interfacing on that collar part as well all right, so next thing I'm going to be joining the sides just like I did on my main fabric. And as you can see, I'm showing you what my back panel is looking like. I joined it completely along the dart area, but on the center back, I joined it leaving an opening. And this op opening is going to serve as a place for me to bring my jacket inside out eventually. Okay, so now I'm... Um, placing my front panel onto the back panel right sides facing each other and i'm going to be joining on the side using the seam allowance that i have on my pattern okay just like we did for the main fabric and once that is done i'm bringing back my main fabric and i'm going to be putting this collar part together like this so just put together this collar area. I'm just trying to show you again what I'm doing so you can follow along and you're going to stitch by half inch. So once I was done stitching by half inch, this is what I have. And next thing is for you to place it this way. Just try to watch what I'm doing. And you're going to be matching that center, uh, center back of the collar to the center back of the bodies. Starting from that part, you're going to match it. You can, uh, use your pin at this point and make sure all your seams are ironed flat go ahead and pin it starting from that center and then you are going to keep pinning if that is comfortable for you but, but make sure you match your shoulder dart as well okay so as you can see i'm matching my shoulder dart and once you're done matching take it to your sewing machine starting from the middle point you are going to stitch and once you get to the corner you lift up your machine foot and then you turn your fabric and then you are going to keep on sewing until the end keep on doing the same thing on the other side as well this may be a little bit tricky, so make sure you take your time on your sewing machine when you are doing it. Do not rush, okay? And once I was done doing that, I went ahead and did the same thing on my lining as well. As you can see, after joining that back area, this is what I have, okay? And um, this is what my main fabric also looks like once I was done doing that part that I just described to you All right, and here is my ammo still left open. Don't worry. We are going to be inserting our sleeve soon. Okay, so now here is a uh, two-piece sleeve uh, make sure you check out the video on how to cut out this sleeve, okay? That's the best sleeve you need to put on your jacket, okay? Don't put basic sleeve on your jacket because it just doesn't come out as nice, all right? So now I also cut out lining for the sleeves as well. And as you can see, I have the lining about one inch shorter than the main fabric. So I cut out lining for both of them, okay? And now I'm going to place them together like this right side facing each other and i'm going to join by whatever similar ones i have and once i was done joining i'm going to move it also to the other side and i'm going to join by my seam allowance as well and once i was done doing that this is what my sleeve is looking like looking so nice right now i'm just trying it, trying it on on my hand to see the feet which was okay and now it's time to insert that sleeve into the arm hole and in order to do that i am going to turn my sleeve onto the right side because i have my jacket on the right side as well okay so after turning it to the right side you have to make sure that you are uh, inserting the correct sleeve to the right place like make sure you put the right hand sleeve into the right hand and oh by making sure you confirm where your sleeve is bending towards it has to be bending towards the front you have to watch my 
uh, two piece leaf cutting in order to understand this bend I'm talking about. All right. And next thing now is to match up your shoulder seam to the notch on your sleeve. And from there, you're going to start pinning. As you can see, I just dipped the sleeve into the armhole like so, and I'm pinning, matching the shoulder notch to the notch on my sleeve so just go ahead and uh, pin it round 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 at this point and once you're done then you can take it to your sewing machine and sew it round by half of an inch okay and repeat the same thing to the second sleeve all right now i am done inserting my sleeve this is what i have and and I also have my sleeve head done at this point, as you can see. And this is meant to give my sleeve a uh, jacket puff look, all right? I'm going to be showing you how I did it using the second sleeve. And I'm making use of a wadding. This is the thickness of the wadding I'm using, as you can see. So next is to place your armhole on top of the wadding and kind of trace it out. You need only the portion of the upper sleeve only after tracing it out i went out and cut it uh giving it a thickness of about one and a half of an inch and then i'm going to be placing it onto my um sleeve opening so basically i'm attaching it on my arm or around my arm all area okay just watch what i'm doing all right so place it like this and fold it along as you're doing keep on pinning this is quite simple you guys so just watch what i'm doing i'm zooming it in so you can see i'm folding it along like this and i'm just placing my pins just to secure it and once all that is done i will take it to my sewing machine and attach all right so i'm just so I'm just trying to show you here that the wadding only stops around my upper sleeve. It doesn't get to the under sleeve, okay? You don't have to take it to the under sleeve. So now take it to your sewing machine and stitch, but make sure your stitch does not extend beyond your seam allowance, okay? Once I was done stitching, this is what it looks like. And you are going to make sure this part is positioned towards your sleeve and not towards your shoulder. I made use of a stitch to keep it in place, okay? All right, so now I, this is my lining and it's time to combine the both of them together. And I'm placing my main fabric jacket on the table. The right side is facing me and I'm keeping my sleeve out of the way and once that is done i'm going to be placing my lining right side facing the main fabric and i'm going to make sure that all the parts are completely matching and also keeping your sleeve out of the way so you don't sew it on the machine then go ahead and match them together starting from the middle and pin them all together as you can see i have already done that and then you take it to your machine and stitch by half of an inch or whatever seam allowance you used you stitch all the way around like this sew it entirely closed okay and once i was done doing that this is what i have make sure you uh, notch all the curved area trim out all the excess and then bring it inside out from that opening okay and after bringing it inside out this is what i have and on the right side it looks something like this as well at this point we are having four sleeves on the jacket <laughs> which is not what we want right so we need to combine this lining and the main fabric sleeves together and i'm going to be showing you how to do that shortly okay so in order to do that you will go through that opening again and bring your um, sleeve inside out or outside in whatever i should just bring it to the wrong side okay so bring it to the wrong side and after bringing it to the wrong side we are going to be combining the both of them so you have to locate your upper sleeve which is the widest one and also locate the under sleeve so you are going to be matching under sleeve to under sleeve and upper sleeve to upper sleeve. This is very important, okay? So, and you are going to be matching them from the inside. That means they have to be right sides facing each other when you match. Even though right now you have the wrong side um, out, but when you match, you have to be matching 
the right sides of both of them together as you can see what i'm doing okay it's a little bit tricky but then it's very very easy just watch what i'm doing and then you can um do it the same way as well so i started from the stitch and i uh, started matching it i'm just using my hand to demonstrate the position how it should look like you have to make sure you're matching them on the right side even though you have them out on the wrong side all right make sure you match upper sleeve to upper sleeve and lower sleeve to lower sleeve and then once i am done i'm going to show you what it looks like so you can have a better understanding of this step so you don't make miss it up okay so once i was done pinning this is what it looks like let me try to zoom in so you can see what i'm doing so this is what i was talking about you see the way i matched them right sides facing each other right so that's what you want to achieve and then you now you will take it to your sewing machine and then you will stitch them together by half of an inch and once i was done stitching i have something that looks like this i have done both sleeves at this point so you will go through your armhole now all right this time around, you dip your hand in your arm hole from the right side and you are going to be bringing both of them out. So you are picking both lining and main fabric together and you pull it out like so. And by the time you do this, your lining and main fabric sleeve is now perfectly combined. Okay, so now we have to close up this space using the invisible invisible hand stitch method all right and once i was done stitching you see how clean is looking it doesn't even look like it was hand stitched i have a video on how to make this hand stitch i'll post it also in the description box so you can have a clean finish like this when you do yours okay so give it a very very nice press the best ironing you can ever do give your jacket the press and once i was done doing that this is what i have you can see my wet pocket is popping is looking so nice i also have a video on that my channel is so complete you guys make sure you check out the video on how to make that wet pocket i'll post it in the description box i know you can't wait to see me try on this jacket to see the feet i'm going to try it on and show you guys what it looks like if you've enjoyed my video make sure you leave me a thumbs up right now and subscribe okay i've been flipping pages since i could remember that told me i had to be within the lines of two degrees and nine to five and i've been working after work since last september working after work yeah. i stay up late on the weekdays on the week i never days. tell when we say oh. i never want to look back and wish i could have been i'm never got no regret yeah. the hours i've been putting in so take a chance on faith you're my Take a chance on faith. Take a chance on faith.